Hello. It is week five in our Charlotte Mason experience. And so I'm coming to you from our new place. And I kind of want to give you guys a recap of the week. So actually, I'm just going to go make some tea. I'll be right back. We've decided to try the Charlotte Mason method for 12 weeks and see what sticks. Okay, so how did this last week go? It went well. So I have been posting a few more videos recently and I've been talking about how we've moved. Um, on Easter Sunday, on Sunday, we moved to a city that's like six hours away from where we live in the country at home on the farm. We brought with us um, four, uh, four days worth of clothes each. Each kid brought one backpack with the things that they wanted to play with, whether it be a device for the weekends or uh, toys or whatever. We have four sets of dishes. Like we're kind of living minimalist life. I would really love to do a day in the life uh, for one of these updates while we're living here because it's really interesting how much less stuff um, is impacting our day to day. Anyways, so we've, we've gone through a whole week now. Today we just finished our Friday school. Uh, the kids are having some free time now and it's been a lovely, lovely week. So. I won't go over book by book every single thing that we did, but we, it's just been another week where we're healthy, we have time, um, other things aren't distracting us, we don't have friends to see. Um, we did have some errands to run. Um, my husband has the car most days, so we have to walk to get groceries multiple times because we can only bring home what we can carry. My goal is to, um, we kind of bought some things initially with the car for like some lunches and stuff that we can grab. But as for suppers, I'm trying to go and bring home grocery bags with two suppers worth of food every two days. That's my walking goal. Um, so anyway, it was really, really good. It was a really good week. So what I'm finding is that we are going through kind of the Charlotte Mason principle thing and we are still having those really beautiful chunks in the day. We're starting early. We start our day, we don't have pet chores anymore, so we start our day at 7.30 instead of seven o'clock. The kids eat, we do breakfast and Bible. Um, it, it, it goes big, basically breakfast and Bible, we do song and memorization, we do 10 minutes of math. Right now, as I mentioned in my uh, recap video that I posted yesterday, um, my kids are both just doing 10 minutes of math for the entire day. I was having my oldest do more to complete a whole lesson, but we forgot his next math book he's supposed to start at home. So we are habit training right now for concentration in math. So each of them are just doing 10 minutes of math a day. We're doing our um, history for the day, whatever that day requires. Uh, by nine o'clock, we are on to language arts and poetry and our read aloud time and stuff. So by 10.30 a.m., we are done for the morning and we have this beautiful chunk which lets us go for walks, um, explore our new house. I've been unpacking, doing cleaning when things are pretty much already clean and <laughs> tidy. Um, and then three days a week, something I really like, I really like that we're only doing Plutarch three days a week. And I put them, instead of doing like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I like that because I like to keep Friday light. And sometimes it's nice to enter the week without an extra thing um, when you're kind of coming away from the weekend. I, I kind of like the the most packed into the middle of the week. So the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for our Plutarch podcast works really well. I did pick up Plutarch from the library. I'm not right reading this, this one with my kids, but our podcast is going through Sertorius right now, which is in about the middle of his uh, Plutarch's lives. So I am reading that myself. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, so that's going really well. And we have lunch uh, when my husband comes home for lunch. And then in the afternoons, I didn't bring any paints, so we're not doing any painting. Um, I did have that scheduled in. We don't have a piano here, so my kids don't have to practice piano. It's basically a mixture of composer study and art study and nature appreciation. So really, really light, fun afternoons. Nature appreciation could be outside. We also went to the library and we got some books, which are absolutely lovely. So we got Farm Throughout the Ages, which by Philip Steele, and just I just thought it would be a, a fun little illustrated book. Kind of going with, with nature vibes. Oh, they're really hard pages to turn. I'm gonna stop flipping <laughs> or attempting to flip. Um, and then, I got the Kids Canadian Plant Book, which I also thought was really good. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a quick flip through at the very end on a faster time lapse at the end of this video. So if you wanna see the pages of these books, I'll put it at the end. 
Um, I also saw this Carl get out of the garden and I noticed it was Carl with a K, which is how my dad spells Carl, which is European. It's German. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then I was like, oh, this is, this is Carl. I bet you this book is going to be about Carl, the guy who like organized how we organize, um, different animalia, animal and, and plant life or animal. I can't remember if he did plants. He did animal and, um, bugs and reptiles and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I haven't read it with the kids yet, but I'm pretty sure that's who it's going to be. It, it's his picture. Yeah. I can't see his last name in here and I forget what his last name is, but we learned about him a couple years ago when we studied butterflies. Um, and then we got the tree book. Um, one of the goals for my, for my term this year for our local ecosystem was for the kids to learn about trees specifically. So I thought this tree book would be really good. Um, I also got some Da Vinci books for artist study um, because the library had quite a few cool ones. So anyway, so we did that. Now this leads me into um, what Charlotte Mason talks a little bit about. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about mother culture and stuff today and mother education, I should say. So basically, as far as our week went, really good, really love our big time chunks in like the end of the morning, a large break before lunch and then really lighter, lighter or whimsical subjects in the afternoon um, with a huge chunk of free time in the afternoon as long as we get going. I think one of the keys to this is to keep the morning early. I think if we started later, it would drag on and the morning would at school, school would run into the afternoon. So I really love that we just like wake up and get right into it. We're doing our Bible stuff with our cereal bowls and toast and stuff like that. So that's just one thing I noticed. Um, so for the motherhood stuff, so uh, I feel like it was maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, I shared a post with some ladies. We were talking about mother culture. And um, we were, uh, one of the things that I was talking about is, is self-education. And something that even before I read Charlotte Mason's book, I really wanted to, to get some educate from, education for myself that wasn't, I didn't care about being accredited. It's not for a job but I really want to get into local ecology, forestry, plant life. I think you call it dendrology, like the identification of woody plants. Um, my grandmother was a ranger um, and she died when I was about four, I think, uh, when I was really young. And I just always thought she was really cool. Her house always had like rock collections and the pictures that I see of her. I have this like really... Um, beautiful image of her, I guess, just loving nature and living for nature. And she went back to university when she was uh, like after kids and stuff to do that. And I've just always been really interested in it kind of ever since I started nature journaling with my kids. And I thought I really would like to know more about plants. And so here I just showed you all the plant books uh, that I have. And I want to read you a quote from Charlotte Mason's volume one um, when it talks about kids learning about plant life. And there's a note for mothers and teachers. It says, mothers and teachers should know about nature. The mother cannot devote herself too much to this kind of reading. Not only that she may read tidbits to her children about matters that they come across, but that she may be able to answer their queries and direct their observation. So anyway, I just really thought, oh, my whole intention was like pretty Charlotte Mason of me. <laughs> Anyways, so one of my goals, um, so I, I've kind of come at this a few different ways and I wanted to have a whole nother video on this, which I will sometime when I get this ball rolling a little bit more. Um, but something I did is I reached out to local um, Canadian colleges that would have um, ecology and plant life that would be something that I would see in real life. Like I don't want to go and take a course from a school in Florida. The plants will be totally different. Um, and what I found was a lot of road blocking. Either you had to have a certain degrees um, before you could take certain courses that I wanted to take, um, or they just weren't willing to have you take a course if you weren't if you if it wasn't with the intent to get a degree. And so I did email them, um, email me, email them administration and stuff, and I just felt very road blocked. Like you're not really helping the university's numbers if you're not going to be a graduate student, and that's pretty obvious. So I was like, okay, I'm obviously on my own for this. Um, at least for the courses that I want to take. If you have like Northern Canadian boreal forest ish, boreal plains, ecology courses that you know of that anyone can take and it doesn't matter, um, what your aim is or goal is, then pop, pop a comment down below or message me somehow. Um, 
But anyways, what I did end up doing is I did find online, uh, I'm, I'm subscribed to um, something where I can watch courses and I did find a gardening course. So I start, I'm starting with that. There's a lot about like soil and stuff like that. I just actually created, oh yeah, I just actually created a unit about poo. That's, I've just been researching tons into soil and all the elements that plants need to be good and healthy. That's actually releasing, I think it's tomorrow, the mega bundle that it's in is, is I'm gonna post tomorrow. I'll post about the mega bundle. Anyway, stay tuned because my new unit's about to come out. Anyway, so I'm taking this course that's going over um, gardening and that is sort of my mother education intention uh, to both suit what I wanna learn as well as what Charlotte Mason's talking about so that hopefully I can be more knowledgeable when my kids and I are out for walks. Um, and as far as mother culture goes, that's another thing I wanted to share today. I'm really diving in with this extra time with less laundry to do and less dishes to do and less household items to organize. I'm reading more. I'm still working. We're still homeschooling. This isn't quite like a holiday, but I am finding more pockets of time where I really want to rest and invest in myself. So that was part of the reason why I picked up Plutarch, Plutarch's Lives, which by the way, I think I said last time we started listening to the audiobook and I was like, ooh, I gotta censor that. Um, yeah, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm having second thoughts about that. I feel like it's fine. It's not that hard to understand. This is the one that's translated by John Dryden and I like it. And it, I, it might be a little dry for my kids. We're still gonna use just the podcast but I'm, I'm, I'm really liking it. So anyway, just an update on my view on Plutarch or my opinion on Plutarch. Um, I'm also reading this classic, To Kill a Mockingbird. At my home library, this was a book club pick of the month and I've always wanted to read it. And so I am reading that before bedtime. I'm about a third of the way through. Never really been much of a before bed reader, but I am becoming one. Um, and then for my devotional time, um, I'm having, I'm reading this. I've actually had this book for a while by Heidi Lee Anderson. P.S. It's going to be good. I got this in pre-release when she first released her book and I've just barely started it. I actually have it on audiobook too. So I will be both listening and reading this one as well as I don't have it in front of me, but I am also listening to the audiobook of A Girl of the Limberlost. That's my read aloud that I'm reading with um, Storied Motherhood. They're an Instagram account. They also have a whole app that they chat on. It's a book club. It's for mamas. If you are looking for a book club that you just want to look at their book list and maybe chat with other moms about it or post about what you're reading in a collective way, then go check out Storied Motherhood. I'll try to link their Instagram account uh, below. And I'm not affiliated with them, but I read with them all the time. So especially when they have classics like this one. So I'm really, really, really liking A Girl of the Limberlost so far. I actually, re I remember seeing the movie when I was younger at my Oma's house. It was like this random, odd movie. I remember thinking it was a, an odd movie, but I'm loving the book. <laughs> I think it's so good. And I haven't read Freckles, but apparently Freckles is the book that comes before it. There is a girl named Fleck Freckles that's mentioned, but I don't think it's necessary to read it before you read A Girl of the Limberlost so far. Anyway, so that was really good. Um, of course, I have my Bible here because I want to make sure I'm getting in Bible reading time. Um, I would like to go over this book again, reading the paper version instead of listening to the audio this time. And then, of course, I got a version that has margins where I can make notes. Um, and then I brought this book um, just because I started reading it in the summer. And I thought if I have extra pockets of time, maybe this one. Um, anyways, we'll see. So gold diggers. It was, it's really interesting um, stories from the gold rush. Uh, and yeah, last summer it was just a topic that really was interesting me. It interest me, is interesting me quite a lot. And I really want to finish it because I didn't finish it and it was really good. So anyway, if you don't know, I have never been much of a paperback reader. I can read. My skill with reading is great, um, but I just do not enjoy settling down with a book in my hand. Uh, and my reading comprehension is not as good as if I can be doing dishes and listening to something or being in the garden and listening to something. I think there's a little bit of me that needs to, to, to stim on something or, or something. I don't actually know, or maybe I'm just an auditory learner more than a visual. I don't know. Um, but this is a new experience for me and I think it's really good for my brain to discipline myself to sit 
and read a book and take time for just that and just shut off the world around you. Because I'm noticing that you have to shut off the world around you in order to actually comprehend what you're reading. <laughs> so maybe it's something I'll get better at and really start to love more. I'm looking at my bed. I feel like that's kind of all. Um, I have been, uh, I'm just trying to back, back plan a little bit. Like people talk about black back planning where you will have your date and then you write down what you do. Um, I thought I would just do that while we were visiting here or like, yeah, living in this new house. So I've been back journaling a little bit, which has been fun. I don't know. I already have a schedule. I don't really need to, but I have a pretty notebook and I thought I'd write in it. So I clearly have a little extra time, which I feel like I need. Anyways, so there's your week five recap. I will try one of these weeks. I'm going to do a day in the life to show you guys um, while we're here because it's just working out really well. The Charlotte Mason schedule and now the, uh, the chunks of time in between have been really, really great. And yeah, I bet you my tea is getting cold now that I made tea. So I think that's all. I will wrap it up. So I hope you are inspired with some ideas. Get a little bit of information about Charlotte Mason maybe, and maybe you'll be inspired about what kind of motherhood education you want to pursue, because I think that that's important. And I think it's really important to not place the most value on accreditation um, in someone else's eyes or like a certificate. I, I'm, I'm all about educating because you want to be a learner, a lifelong learner. So that's my goal. And I think that that's a good one to keep at least at the top of the priority pile. There can be other things under that if you want, but <laughs> anyways, okay, we'll see you next time. Bye.